Hello and welcome to the Needle Creations Crochet Video Workshop. We're here to show you how to do some techniques along with some tips on how to create your crochet project. The segment we're working on today is a crochet kit camper called Wander. Your kit is going to come with everything that you need. You'll have your instruction, yarn that you need, your crochet hook, a plastic needle, a button, You'll need to have a pair of scissors and some cardboard. Now, there's a template for the front and the back of the camper, so it'll give it a little stability. You can either trace this, or if you have a printer, you can copy it. Whatever you do, make sure that all your dimensions are accurate and you get this to size so it will fit your crochet piece. Also, I suggest that you take the yarn hanks that aren't balled and roll them into a ball. It's going to make it a whole lot easier to work with that way. There's a great set of instructions. The skill level is listed as intermediate. Make sure that you understand your instructions before you begin and practice the stitches being used so that you don't become overwhelmed working on your project. Your kit will come with a 3.5 millimeter hook. It may be white, it may be blue. Many of us have our favorite hook, but we recommend you use the hook that comes with this kit to maintain gauge or the tension of your fabric so you won't run out of yarn. There's five different areas to a hook. The head, the throat or the neck, the shaft, the thumb rest, and then there's the handle. You can hold it like this, or you can hold it like this. The head of the hook is smaller and pointed, so it makes it easy to go in, but your stitch should always be equal with the shaft part of your hook, and that also will help you with your gauge. You may find that there's a little bit of a rough spot on the top of the head. Lightly smooth that out. Many crochet instructions will include a gauge check before you begin. Having the correct tension, which is how tight or loose you crochet, is important to your project coming out to the correct size and will ensure that you don't run out of yarn. You'll single crochet a swatch and you'll count the number of rows and stitches across to make sure that it matches what your instructions say. Also on your instructions, you're going to see your abbreviations. Make sure you understand each one, the colors of the yarn the various stitches. If you have to repeat any instructions, you will see an asterisk or brackets, then your other abbreviations. Each instruction sheet will have great graphics on what stitches are used for this project. If you need a refresher to practice any of them, please check our crochet stitches video. Now we're going to start with the front and the back and the lining. I want to show you these are four pieces that are made identical. The lining is solid color. It's all the cream color. The front and the back are two-tone, so you have cream and blue. They're all four made the same. You're just changing color. So we're going to start each piece with the cream. And these are very easy to make. Straight single crochet. We're going to start off with a slip knot on our hook. Chain 19. going to come back single crochet across the row. Count your chains to make sure you have 19. You can see how they make little V's and you're going to start with the second chain from the hook. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can insert your hook through the top of the loop or you can insert your hook through the bottom of the loop. Whatever you decide to do, keep it consistent. I like working in the bottom of the loop because it makes a nice edging. So we're going to single crochet across.
and you should have 18 stitches when you get across your first row. Just so I can show you, you're going to increase, you're going to do a section of single crochet rows, and then you're going to decrease. So that kind of creates the shape that you're going to need. Turn our row, so we're going to chain one. Now we're going to start our increases, two single crochet in that first stitch, and then single crochet across the row. So that'll give us 20 stitches at the end of this row. And always count your stitches to make sure you have the right number. one so this will make an increase so we should have 20 stitches and let's count these real quick one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so you keep increasing as the instructions say through row nine then you're going to change color and add the blue. So you complete the row, pick up your next color, pull the loop through, that would be your chain. Fasten off your first color. And we're going to continue single crochet per the instructions for the number of rows. Right now we're working straight single crochet. This is what your piece is going to look like when it's finished. So you've got the upper part is blue, the lower part is cream. You'll have two pieces like this, both the front and the back, and then you'll do two more in solid cream. So that will become the lining. Now, once you do this, you're going to work around the outer edge. So since this is two-tone, I'm going to start right here where the blue is. I'm going to add my yarn and I hold this and work it over my stitches. Do a chain one. Each row end is what you're going to put a stitch in and you're going to work around single crochet. Each row, if you can see these, this is two. So that's two rows, two rows, two. So you're going to put a stitch in each row end. As the instructions say, how many stitches you should have on each side and how many stitches you should have on this increase portion. When you get to your corner, you're going to put two single crochet in that first stitch. And actually, I'm going to do three. Putting three in a corner stitch helps round the corner, makes it a little more flat for you. Then we're going to work across the top. We've got a cross, and we're going to get to that last stitch on the end before we take the angle down. We're going to put two single crochet stitches in that one. And again, I'm going to do three, and then again, one stitch in each row end. to change color. Now on this one, you pull up a loop in that last stitch that you're making on the blue section. And this is where you're going to change color. And I do like to tie it off just to make sure it's going to hold. The 
working over your ends. Again, one single crochet stitch in each row end and complete it around. Just as we did the top portion, you do the same thing with this section. You get to your corner, one, two, three. And see, this was our beginning chain row, so you can see the edge on here, and it just makes a nice little loop for you to pick up and put your stitch in. You work across. in the corner again so one stitch in each end and we are back to the beginning. So I like to just slip stitch there, fasten that off, and then I'll weave those ends in on the back side. So this is what your front and back piece are going to look like. Now there's also top stitching that goes around all the pieces, the front and the back, on the side panels, and also around the door. So I'm going to show you how to do your top stitching. It's repeated the same way through every piece. Now in this case, we're going to use the line between the two color changes to work through. You're going to insert your hook. You want to keep your working yarn to the back of your work. I'm going to pull a loop through. We're going to go into that next stitch, pull a loop through and through that loop again. Now let me do this again. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Pull the yarn up, pull it through your loop. All right, now you can see how this makes a nice line. And you can see what it looks like on the back. You see, it looks like it's just going around the stitches. And you have a nice top stitched V pattern going across the top. And this method is used, like I said, on the door and on the side panel. So you do it the same way. Now one thing you'll find as you work with crochet, especially when we're making these pieces, because we do want them to be firm, not too tight, but firm, you'll notice when you work single crochet, they tend to curl. So just be patient. I'm going to pull this out and then what I'm going to do is weave these ends in right now before we start sewing everything together. And actually tie because this is all, you're not going to see any of these, it's the easiest way to secure things. Same thing here, I'm going to weave this end in. And you see what I did here? I went through the back loops of those stitches. That's a great way for weaving in all your yarn ends. 
pull that through and I'm going to tie this to secure it and then I'm going to trim all my ends. So the front and the back will look like, actually this is the way it goes. So this, the cream color part is the lower part, the blue is the upper part. Now at this point, you need to go ahead and make your window, your door, and your outer band in the same manner, single crochet in rows back and forth. Now everything else is done in single crochet except for the wheels. This is the only portion of the camper that is worked in the round. So what we're going to do with those, you start with your slip knot. Going to chain two. And you're going to work seven single crochet into that second chain. and then pull that tail to tighten the hole. And then you're going to place a marker and then we're going to increase seven stitches. So you're going to single crochet two times in each stitch. One, two, this will give you 14. Three, four. Six. Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And for the third round, you're going to do a round of black. And sometimes black is very difficult to see the stitches. So I want to show you quickly. This is what your wheels are going to look like. You're going to make three of these. Pull and tighten your center. And I like to weave that end in to make sure it's going to hold tight. So I just go through the loops of some of these back stitches. And see that secures it and it pulls it together and you don't have a hole in the center of that. Okay, now you're going to sew a wheel on the front and the back and then one on the side piece. And so this is going to be the front piece. I've already done the wheel on the back. There's the front, there's the back. Place them together and you can see they're lining up. Just count the stitches over or you can place it wherever you like, but just make sure you keep them even. Stitch this on. So we've got the wheel on the front and the back. We'll make our windows, which we've already completed. These again are made in the same manner, single crochet in rows back and forth. There's a large one and a small one. The large one gets sewn on the front. The small window goes on the side panel, which has also got an additional wheel. So we have three wheels, two windows, and the door. Now we're going to make a French knot for the door knob. All right, I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail in the back. And this is something you got to, it's easier to work on a flat surface because being a small crochet, single crochet piece that's a little tight, it's going to curl on you. So you're going to wrap your yarn around your needle twice. See how I did that? One, two. Keep it tight as possible. Go in just above 
where you came through so you don't lose keep your finger down on that yarn and there you go you've created a French knot doorknob tie this don't pull too tight all right then the door is stitched on the front piece and again just kind of eyeball it position it and I'm going to use my crochet hook to hold that in place while I'm stitching. I'm not going to stitch across the lower edge. I'm just using the blue that I had from the edging on the door to attach it. Go through a couple of stitches in the back. Clip that. Then we're going to sew the window on the front. And again, you can kind of eyeball it to see where you want to place it. You have a lot of thicknesses you're working through, so it can be a little awkward. to finish it off in the back. Run your end through a few of the hoops of the stitches. Fasten off. You also have the outer band. Stitch the wheel on it. And we have a window that goes on also, which is about the same level as the front of our camper. Now what you need to do is position this so you can see that's about right, about the same spot. And stitch it down. Now these are all the pieces that you're going to need to complete your camper. So you have your front and your back. You have your lining. We've already started this. I'm going to show you how to put these together and whip stitch. The same way with the outer band. You have one that's going on the outside and a lining. And for the cardboard that you're going to need to put in there to keep it more sturdy, you're going to cut a strip 17 inches long, one and a half inches wide. And I used poster board for mine. You don't have to go out and buy anything special. You can use a shoe box or a FedEx box and cut it up. As long as it's a sturdy piece, it works. Now what you're going to do is match a lining with one of the front and back pieces, stitch by stitch. I've put markers on the solid pieces so I would know exactly where everything was supposed to meet. So the top piece first, so I start over here with the blue, work around, and that's when I insert the template. And it should slide and make sure it fits tightly. And you've got enough give in this to where you'll need to stretch it just a little bit to make it work. Now if your gauge is off and your pieces are not quite to the exact measurement, you may have to trim the cardboard template, but you will have some give in your fabric. You want it to be tight, but you don't want it to be so tight that your cardboard's going to fold on you. And you're just gonna match stitch to stitch.
template in, make sure you even it up. The front and the back. Let's just finish this off and weave in the end. And trim it. And now we've completed the outer band. I've inserted the cardboard and stitched up the ends. And I've also completed the front piece and inserted the template. Now we have all of our pieces and we're going to sew those to the outer band. I start with the front and only attach the lower portion because this is how it opens up. Make sure you match where you're going to start your seam going to leave enough in there to where I can tie it off when I'm finished. It will be on the inside so you won't see it. And you just kind of follow your stitches. Try to match rows going down and then coming across and make sure you get it evened up to match over here on the opposite side. And this can be a little awkward, so just be patient. You might have to work at it a little bit to try to figure out what's an easy position to set and hold it. I'm trying to work on a table here, and sometimes it's easier maybe to just hold it in your lap. to the back. Now you can see what the back side looks like and I'm just going to run this through, kind of finish off. That won't be seen. The back piece is sewn on in the same manner only all the way around so you'll attach the back matching your sides and the colors together and then stitch this all the way around. We have a button that goes on the top Kind of position it in the center. I'm going to take my needle through there. Loop your ends. And then we have the chain. Position it in the same spot as the button. And this is how I do it. I just kind of come over. And I take my crochet hook. You can use your needle, whatever works best for you. I pull the yarn tail through. As you can see, you have to have a little patience. These little pieces can be difficult sometimes. And then tie it. And you can take your needle or your hook and just pull your ends through. There we go. And now we trim it off. And it may be easier for you to use your needle to do that. All right. So there we have the front. The back is sewn on the same way. And here's our completed Wander the Camper. And if you have any questions, you can contact us via email, help at askacrafter.com. I love to crochet.